Hey fellas, Nick here, and let me ask you this, you know anyone who owns a cereal maker? No, you don't, because I just invented one. Fortunately, the design isn't that complicated, you just press a couple buttons and ask what kind of cereal you want. For example, I'm gonna try and order some checks. It's still a work in progress. Cereal is a breakfast food well known for its track record of having enough sugar in one spoonful to kill a family of 12. That's why I eat it every morning. Adds variety. To help redirect all the clueless children away from the nutritional label, companies have opted for including toys to distract you as you eat. These range wildly from a plastic contraption that you could get at least a couple of seconds of fun from, to- HOLY sh A CROSSWORD PUZZLE! But General Mills saw the problems stemming from making quite literally some of the most generic cereal to ever possibly exist. Especially in the 90s, where everyone was always making cool cereal because everyone was cool and radical and hip. God, I need to wash my mouth out after saying that. Sprinkle Spangles, Bill and Ted's Excellent Cereal, Breakfast Bears, Fingos! Meanwhile, Chex is over here being beat by Raisin Bran. You know, at least Raisin Bran has the gimmick of, oh, it's gonna lower heart disease or something. Uh, Lucky Charms is gonna rope in everyone who wants kidney stones. Chex just doesn't do anything, it's not unique. Things were getting heated, so as a last resort, General Mills had two options. They could either make actually interesting food that doesn't taste like cardstock dressed up as food for Halloween, or, they can make a video game. Guess what they went with? With a budget of just 500 grand, a company named Digital Cafe was told to make a game based on checks, and when it came out, people loved it. Expectations were originally kept low, it was expected to last around 3 months, but instead, it flew out in around 6 weeks. So, with even less time left, they had to squirt out Chex Quest 2, made available as a download with, I assume, less success. I mean, how many people were gonna go download a sequel to a serial game they played last year? In 1997. Some time passes, 2008 happens, and four more Digital Cafe members Charles Dacoby and Scott Holman made Chex Quest 3, rounding out a trilogy with five new levels. But it includes a remaster of Chex Quest 2. Jacoby said that he made significant revisions to the levels, so I'll be taking a look at that version, mostly because it gives more for me to talk about than the levels are bad. Alongside various other things, Charles Jacoby still hosts Chex Quest 3 on his very own website to this day. Chex Quest 3 is built on Z Doom, which is the predecessor to GZ Doom. All I did was look in the settings for a few minutes, so don't quote me on this, but I really don't see how they're different. But who cares, let's pop in the remastered Chex Quest 2 and let's see what they have to offer. Well, here we are, Chex Quest and the Curse of the Number 2. Anyone familiar with the core of Chex Quest will be quick to realize that most of the fundamental assets like the HUD, Zorchers, and Textures remain mostly the same, making Chex Quest 2 feel like a level pack taking place after the first game, instead of it being its own product. I don't know if you realize, Chex Quest 2 is like, Chex Quest 1 again! The story here is pretty simple, Chex Quest Zorchers don't kill Flemoids, instead they teleport them. That has become a problem because, uh-oh, the Flemoids have come back to Chex Planet and they're taking over everything! Now the Chex Man has to come in and stop all the guys once again. In order to see everything in this game, I went for all kills, all secrets, and most of the time, I got all the items. I wanted to do this personally so that I could see everything the game has in story. If I see all the secrets, then surely I'll be able to see at least every single little thing that the game has in store for itself. But enough preamble, let's just get into the levels, starting off with the spaceport as the game names it. It seems like it's trying to be a city, but honestly I don't even know what to describe it as. It begins with this diner and it seems like a town or something, but then you go through these weirdly generic areas full of flemoids and spaceships, it just doesn't make sense to me. Speaking of flemoids, Chex Quest 2 introduces some new ones pretty early on. Like this worm creature, who's kind of annoying. It replaces the Cyclops, and the Cyclops was equally as annoying in Chex Quest 1, so there you go. This game's really changed my perspective on animals. Like, if I saw a worm in real life, I don't know what I'd do. Jesus! These big buff-looking flemoids are the next new enemy. They fire projectiles at you and are based off of the armored flemoids of legs. Besides the final boss, these two are the only new flemoids, but that makes sense. If you were expecting more, you must have misunderstood me. I said flemoids. Plural. To minimum. The new Flemoids look like they're done by someone completely different though, like just look at the lines around them and they seem a lot more pronounced compared to the other ones. They certainly look out of place compared to the original sprites. Back to the level, this makes no sense. It starts out as being a city. Sure, here's a diner. I'm glad the cereal people have their own restaurants because at least we know now that they're actually making food instead of cereal people eating cereal. And I take that all back because there is a bowl of cereal right in that diner. Cannibalism. 
Once you've explored the diner and realized that, besides the shotgun's orchard you can find in this vent, there is no reason to go in here, you can open this door to find that you need to go through these alleys where a bunch of spaceships are kept. Go up this elevating platform thingy and the buff flemoids are here with a rocket launcher's orchard. The blue key's in this area, so once you get it, you go into the blue door and get in this dark area, which I still don't know what to classify it as. If you didn't get a shotgun, then you can now because there is one right here by your exit. The red key was teased before if you saw it in this vent, but you can get it now, and then you can go right out to the red door. I want to take a moment to address the world building that Chex Quest 2 has. While it's really only done in the first two levels before being kind of abandoned, I appreciate how it's done. You have citizens being terrorized by the Chex people now, and there's even these little signs painting a world. Not only do you have advertisements for Chex, which makes no sense because why would there be advertisements for Chex on a planet where everyone is Chex, but there's also a sign about space tours being cancelled to the planet Bazoic because you were just on that island. That's where Chex Quest 1 took place. That's a really nice world building detail that I find pretty interesting. You can actually walk through this wall and get some Zorchers. You know, the secrets in this game are actually hidden quite well. They're put in ways that aren't completely cryptic, like maybe you'd want to go up close to this poster and you might see this. Overall, quite a solid starting level, even if it's thematically a little odd. Next is the cinema. No clue how we went from random Cinema spaceships to the movies, but whatever, I don't care. The world building elements in the cinema though are leagues better. All the Flemoids are at a theater, there's billboards about eating checks, there's checks versions of Ace Ventura, Indiana Jones, Jaws, a shark. How do you think checks people talk about the Muppets? That's an amphibian. Snacks, popcorn machines, each theater not only having a movie playing, but a separate one for each theater. I mean, like, yeah, they're little black and white loops, but it doesn't really matter. For something that's made as a Doom level pack, it is really interesting how they cram in all these little details that really didn't need to be there, but they help build this world really well. There's even iconic arcade machines like Chomp and Blaster. Funny, because Blaster has a blaster inside the machine. Wow, these game devs are so quirky. I want to see them commit assault and battery. Push this lever to open the ticket stand, then open each theater, and the end is right there. In terms of secrets, one of the theater screens has this area behind it, and the vent has this super boot spork in it. This level is overall a pretty solid one, despite the theaters themselves being somewhat annoying to clear out of flemoids. One thing that's odd is there's no checks people left in the theater, which makes me really scared how the flemoids are running a whole movie theater by themselves. I try not to think about it. Next comes the Chex Museum. How did we get here, okay? This looks nothing like the alleyway I was just going down a second ago next to that movie theater. Chex Quest 1, every level felt like you are going deeper and deeper into the planet of Bazoic. You only ever see the sky in the first level and you keep going deeper and deeper into the world until you reach the natural caves of the planet. Chex Quest 2 feels like you're connecting these levels very loosely with like a piece of thread or something. Now, does this really matter for a serial tie-in game from the 1990s? Actually, yes, it does. Ever since I got this game in 1996, I've been trying to figure out how did the Chex Quest 2 levels get connected. Turns out, I was negative 10 years old when the game came out, and that's why all my theories looked like squiggles. The museum does a lot of world building stuff too. All these classic paintings and sculptures are remade with Chex, and it's fun to admire it all while you cleanse the population. This level starts with a lot of natural plants and the like. Apple trees, a spoon with Chex in this pool is some kind of art piece, I think. It's even overlooking this maze. Okay, this is starting to get annoying. You take the worst part of Chex Quest, the maze from level four, and you did it again. Great, thanks. I cannot contain my excitement. This is so amazing. Can't you tell? This level isn't terrible, more so tolerable. It really just doesn't have that much interesting as a level. It exists. It's like eating white bread. You start in the museum, get a key from the outside, go to the top area, get the yellow key, and the yellow door reveals someone f***ing saved me. I'm going insane. So not only do I get shown a maze down there in the lower areas of the map, but now I'm stuck having to go through this dark area with walls that all look somewhat the same, which makes for a really confusing and irritating area which is thankfully not that big. Once you find the red key in there, you can open the red door to a teleporter, and oh god damn it, are you ready to spend what feels like hours in this maze trying to find every little crevice where a flammator item could possibly be, while also looking for what path to find out of this maze? Checking the map every three seconds that's barely readable because the walls in the path look the exact same? No. <sighs> well, that's what you're gonna be stuck doing for a while, buddy. At least the music sounds nice. Is it a bad thing that it took me this long to get to the music? I don't know, the levels 
have okay music. It's not very memorable in the same way that Chex Quest 1 had memorable music. Level 1 is fine. Level 2 is less fine. Level 3 is pretty good. Level 4's vibe is way off. And the level 5 music is a great finale song. Dare I say, it's better than the level 5 from the last game, actually. Like, the level 5 music from Chex Quest 1 felt kind of silly, almost. This one feels more, like, tense. Like, it's building up. There you go, Andrew Bennon. I don't like this music you made 26 years ago. Why aren't you responding to my text messages? The maze is amazing. Big whoop, I don't care. I just want to be done with this level. In terms of secrets, the last device is behind this painting. That's really the only important one because you'll need it for the final boss. One thing that's odd is there's normal people with Chex bodies, but there's dinosaurs here and they don't have Chex bodies. Did the humans evolve to have Chex shaped bodies? I'm trying not to think about it. Next is the city streets level, which I do not enjoy. This level puts a feeling of dread inside me as I play it because this level has these sewer pipe things where phlegmoids will sometimes come out of. Why is this filming with just spare so much? Well, look at these things and then you'll realize that finding every item will be like trying to find a hay in a stack of needles. Any world building that you may have found in the other levels is completely thrown out of the window because I guess Czech cities just have teleporters in them. Also, why are there so many things locked behind keys that Czech men can just take? Like he just goes to the people's houses and he's like, well, I'm taking this key. At the very least, I like how big and tall the city feels, even though it looks really repetitive. You teleport over here and get the blue key from what is presumably some guy's building I just broke into. This opens a door over here to this gap where you can hit a switch somewhere to form a bridge or just tough it out through the slime floor and use these vents to progress. This elevator takes you to the yellow key and has a convenient hole in the conveniently placed wall that conveniently leads you back onto the streets where you can conveniently find a conveniently yellow door. Wow, that was really, uh, what's the word? Accessible. The yellow door unlocks some kind of building, definitely. I don't know. This whole time I've been in a city level, and I honestly don't think I can look at the interiors of these buildings and go, yeah, that makes sense to have in a city. Anyways, you go to the side of the room to unlock the door, then you can find a red key on top of the buildings, then you can come out of this red door, jump out the broken window, and the exit is practically there. Overall, the level's fine, I guess. I don't really like it that much, but, you know, it's not the worst thing. And now on to the final level, the Czech City sewer system. First off, again, the music is great. It almost feels tense with this finale vibe it gets. Everything kind of looks very samey here. I get that sewers aren't very artistic or creative, but also people don't tend to leave yellow keys or bowls of fruits lying around in the sewers, so you can be a little creative, guys. You gotta get the yellow key, then open this lock, which gives you this other area. Now, I fell into this deeper part, and you need the blue key to progress, but it doesn't seem like there's any elevators to get you to the top floor, right? Well, no, if you looked at this tiny light next to this valve, you'd obviously realize that this is a door that you can open. Obviously! Once you grab the blue key, then you can go down to the area of the blue door, kill some enemies, and there's a yellow door that comes after the blue door for some reason, and it's a repeat of the museum. Wow, a small, dark, maze-like area with repetitive-looking walls where you have to find a red key? I've never seen that before! Use the elevator to go back up to the higher level, and you've made it to the final floor. After some really long hallways, you're met with the final room, featuring 25 Flemoids and two Maximus Flemoids. These guys replace the Flem brain and are the final enemy introduced in Chex Quest Two. After those two are gone, you've done it. You've officially beaten Chex Quest Two. There's a little thing about how Chex City is saved, but after a decade, they want to kill everyone again. And boom, now you have to play Chex Quest Three to figure out the lore of what's going to happen next. Chex Quest Two is definitely a weird sequel because even with the remastered levels, it doesn't feel that much better than the first game. I mean, if you take a step back and look at the game critically, Chex Quest already wasn't doing that much. It only had five levels and an engine that was made several years ago, and all you're gonna do is you're gonna come back and you're gonna make only five more levels that aren't even that good in the first place. But maybe I was too harsh on the game. Let's take a look at the old levels and see if anything got different. Jesus Christ, I take it all back. Every level was redone to some extent. The cinema was fully remade. The yellow door area in the museum is a bunch of gray textures. There's a hole in the wall that leads to the void. Overall, there's just a lot less like unique textures. A lot has been recycled and it just doesn't feel that much unique. It's less fun than the remaster. The remaster is still kind of lackluster, but if you like Doom mods, Give it a try, it's not terrible. You can play worse things. Like the not remastered levels. But one last odd thing about Chex Quest 2. The light Chex armor gives 200% armor, but the dark colored Chex only gives 100% armor, making the light colored Chex better than the dark one. Right, there's my proof. White supremacy's in Chex Quest! <laughs>